in all of Collin County, every judge gives you 20 minutes per side on a temporary order hearing. Oh, okay. So how are you going to get there in 20 minutes? That's a whole different skill set. And show me somebody that can do that, and that mm-hmm. impresses me more. Because I've seen plenty of phenomenal, amazing, great attorneys that just can't handle that 20-minute time limit. After doing it for so long, I know how to do it, and it can be done. But to me, that's a higher level of lawyering skill than... Days at a time. Yeah. One, two, three, go. There for Hardy RR. Believe it or not. Welcome to the Lawyer Dana Show. The Lawyer Dana Podcast. Wow, we have a lot to talk about. Then we're going to do it right after this. Welcome to the Lawyer Dana Podcast. So are you excited about the Boys to Men concert you're going to be going to? <laughs> no, I seriously <laughs> doubt I'm going to go. I don't typically go to stuff like that and... I could maybe get into something like that if I was on a cruise ship in international waters and ha- still drank. Maybe, and, maybe and I still would. <laughs> drank. That's the important part. You know, and if they were going to play like Cypress Hill, then that song might. Cypress be. Hill? You know, jump. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I didn't know Apparently, you were a fan. I would. Yeah, I start jumping. So <laughs> You start <laughs> jumping. Maybe a hard pass I'd on probably, Boys I'd, I'd probably skip that and go to dinner with Bill or something. Okay. Because well. I like to go talk with people. Yeah. I don't know if you notice that by the fact that I have a podcast. And Lawyers going, like to going talk. to live music, I either want to appreciate the musicianship of it, but to, writing that line of like, how much do I participate in dance and get into that? Like, it just doesn't, as a musician, I see behind the scenes of it too much. So yeah. it's, I look at things just a little bit differently. Mm-hmm. It's hard for me to get into it. And if it's an act like, uh, there are certain, like, a, I think it's a Japanese audience or something where they'll go to a rock concert and there's complete silence in the audience. And then at the end, there's just huge applause. Yeah. But at least that was like what was happening in like the 80s or 90s or something. There were okay. some countries and they would just sit there politely and watch the whole act. And the American acts were like, what's going on? They hate us. Yeah. And why aren't they like interacting like an American audience? And it was just shocking. But then at the end, they would applaud. And so they treated it like they would like a symphony. And when you go to a symphony, you don't want to make a sound. You just sit and appreciate it. Mm-hmm. And I tend to be that type of observer in most. In concerts? Yeah, even rock concerts or. Rock concerts? Yeah. You're sitting there quietly kind of. and politely. Yeah. I mean, kind of. All right. Things I'm not going to do like with I'll, you go to concerts. I'll cheer in, in between. but the- And I don't go to a lot of rock concerts anymore. I mean, my favorite band is No More. Really? Yeah, Rush. They're no, not together? No, or? Peart died. Oh, okay, and so okay, okay. Alex and Getty have played one show, basically a memorial for him is a memorial for Taylor Hawkins, who was the drummer for Foo Fighters that died mm-hmm. way prematurely, by the way. He was 50. At oh. least Neil was like around 70, something when he passed away in his 70s, I think 68, 69. I mean, both still tragically young, in yeah. my opinion, but Taylor even more so. And so Getty and Alex played with the Foo Fighters and Taylor's son sat in with them i hmm. think at one point who's also a drummer plays just like him obviously learned from his dad from his he's kind of like the jason bonham who is john bonham's son who sat in and plays with led zeppelin now okay so taylor's son is actually i saw him play and he was a really decent drummer and he put a lot into it and so he gets an absolute a plus for effort and his style everything i didn't find flaw with it which is unusual because a lot of times i will see different things uh, dream theater has a new drummer uh, when Mike Portnoy basically resigned. Is. So another rock band from around the same time, not as successful as Rush, but pretty successful, like big. Mm-hmm. They're kind of a big deal. And they are like, Rush is kind of known as melodic, progressive rock and pretty diverse. Dream Theater has taken like, I would call them progressive rock. They're very technical. I think they all went to University of Berkeley Music School. Oh. And I would call them probably progressive metal. So what's the difference? Just very technical music okay. to play. Very, very difficult. Few human beings on earth can play their music, and they ace it. They mm-hmm. play it well. Their talent and skill-wise is just out of this world. And John Petrucci, especially on guitar, is phenomenal. And they have a keyboardist who is just made. Really, all of the musicians in the band are the best of the best of the best. I think that Rush, the three musicians in Rush, are Mm -hmm. better because Dream Theater, I think, is in some aspects are probably technical for the sake of being technical. Mm -hmm. Rush was technical for the sake of being musical. Hmm. 
and they played phenomenally great and diverse music, whereas Dream Theater is a little bit more in its same lane. Dream Theater could be characterized by lots of notes. <laughs> um, <laughs> Rush were never particular showy offy, even though the Not fact even that they were musically, playing, what, like they were, when well, what they were playing is just the fact that they're playing it is amazing in itself and enough. Mm-hmm. Whereas Dream Theater is like almost look what I can do type of performance. Oh, okay. Performance. A little more in your face about it. Uh, uh, sort of. And I don't know if they intend to be. It's just maybe that style of music comes off that way. Okay. So, well, I'm a little disappointed that you're not going to show up for Boys to Men because, but well, that's it, your chance it, to be the like fifth member it, of the boy with band. With my hearing now and, and being a drummer, I'm just too protective of my hearing to go into stuff. So if I have earplugs, I might venture in yeah. and see. But just honestly, I would probably be bored by it. So would you be the fifth member of Boys to Men? I'm always giving you a hard time about your boy band haircut. Boys to Men, DCP. <laughs> yep, that's um, right. So You'd blend. Would I be in it? Not. I might be in it more than I would want to go see it. Yeah. I think. Something like that. I don't know a lot of Boys to Men stuff either. I yeah. Just, I know who they are. I know of them. But yeah. I've never, like, I know, like, one song that they do. So Johnny Depp's attorney is going to be there, too. Are you excited mm-hmm. about her? I mean, to me, she's no more of a celebrity than dozens and dozens of other attorneys that i know okay yeah you described her as adequate adequate so, attorney. well now i have to hashtag explain that hashtag like that. my exact comment was she was good and adequate <laughs> yes she was good and adequate whereas the opposing attorneys were not I, yeah. they should have been better prepared but i thought camille met the mark i analyze lawyers all the time i didn't see any kind of perry mason moment and she had amazing clay to work with because she had a witness that should have been torn apart the way that that witness was. Mm-hmm. And so she did the job adequately. She did the job. Yeah. And she's got a lot of fame because she did the job, but with the budget that they had, the amount of preparation, the organization that you had, I mean, that's the job I would have expected. Mm-hmm. So me, if I was her supervising attorney, I would say, okay, yes, you did a good job, but it's the same similar type of good job that I would expect on any case, especially one with a budget. Budget makes all the difference. Yeah. Cause show me her do that on a $5,000 case. You know, somewhere between five and 15,000. Mm-hmm. And then that might impress me more. But I mean, she met the mark. And so there's no fault in her performance. Well, can you do that kind of preparation on a $5,000 case? I mean, no. Yeah, that's, that's the reality of it. Yeah. Once about the time you get to 15 or 20,000 mm-hmm. for a 20 minute hearing, you can be prepared for that on a multi-day hearing and a you know, all-day type of thing. And that's, that's another thing is that she had enough time to do what she needed to do as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, in Collin County, we get 20 minutes. Or the whole trial, a long trial is a full day is considered two and a half hours your side, two and a half hours the other side. And sometimes a full day is considered 90 minutes your side, 90 minutes the other side. And she had more than that just with that one witness. So who dictates that? The court the court the judge the judge specific or like Collin County in all of Collin County every judge gives you 20 minutes per side on a temporary order hearing so how are you going to get there in 20 minutes that's a whole different skill set and show me somebody that can do that and that Uh impresses me more because I've seen plenty of phenomenal amazing great attorneys that just can't handle that 20 minute time limit Uh and I just sit there a lot of times I'm part of the art in handling a 20 minute hearing is pure patience And just letting them go, I'm doing nothing right now except listening to what they do and letting them burn their clock. And then I know how to deal with this and still have some time left over. And what it is that the judge is really listening for, what the judge really needs to hear, I can defend against their part. And some people think, well, you want to be the petitioner and you want to be the one that requests the temporary order hearing. And sometimes that's true, but not always. And I hear people that are convinced that that's always true because they heard that once. Yeah, on TV, yeah. that's the only thing that they know. Or they heard it from a friend or whatever. And for that friend's case, it might have been good advice or it might not have been good advice. But there are plenty of times when, I mean, there's an advantage and a disadvantage to everything. In a 20-minute hearing, I think there's a disadvantage in going first Mm -hmm. because it doesn't matter who gives their opening first. In fact, I like giving my opening second. That's really what happens first. And then, because I like to hear all their stuff and go, Your Honor, actually, let me tell you what really is going on in this case. This, 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 this. And, and then they're left there. with that thought. And so they tell one thing and then I disprove them. Mm-hmm. And I get the credibility and then I'm the believable source at the end. So mm-hmm. I, on a temporary order hearing, I generally like to go second better because if I'm going first, I'm guessing at what they're going to put up. And I don't know what I have to defend or not. And if they go first, they might not get to something that I would have tried to preemptively have to destroy 
in my 20 minutes. And my 20 minutes is putting on my entire case and defending against their entire case. Mm-hmm. And how do you do that in 20 minutes? Well, a lot of that also is preparation. Mm-hmm. That type of lawyering is a different level. And mm-hmm. I love the cases where we have plenty of budget and plenty of time that we can prepare and, right. and do all that. And I will know. But you get the same 20 minutes. Well, it depends. I mean, for a temporary order here yeah. and like that. Yeah. But we also, we come in with exhibits and everything and, and outlines and summaries mm-hmm. that we can go this, 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 this and show that to the judge and then tell the judge what the judge really needs to hear, which after doing it for so long, I know how to do it and it can be done. But to me, that's a higher level of lawyering skill than days at a time. Yeah. You know, something I've always wanted to know Mm -hmm. on television shows, whenever someone is being served a court documents like for divorce or whatever. And they, yes. Why is that a real thing? But I, you know, it's a real thing that people do because they watch, because they watch TV, but but it is the stupidest thing that you can ever possibly do. It's for your benefit that they're giving you the papers, right? That's like saying, Oh, I've been served with a lawsuit, tearing it up and not showing up to court. Because you're automatically going to lose if you don't take those papers. I was, well, I was going to say, I mean, it happens it's whether called you service of process. Not. The process is that you are entitled to notice and a hearing before the government mm-hmm. takes away your property, your liberty, or your life. Mm-hmm. So do you want to know when and where you have to show up? Because that's why they're bringing that to you. All that you're doing is maybe for an insignificantly short period of time delaying them from being able to win the case as if you forgot to go to court one day. Yeah. So the judge is only going to hear their side Mm -hmm. because what they're going to do, they're going to go, Oh, he's evading service or she's evading service. So great. We'll just post the notice up at the courthouse where no one's going to read it. Mm -hmm. And we'll put it in a A newspaper newspaper that that no one one buys and that no one reads. Do Mm -hmm. you read the newspaper? No. Do you know even what newspaper it is? Oh, no. Right. That's a good point. And no one does. And no one reads it. Yeah. It's all basically an illusion. They might send it to you through email or they might send it to you through Facebook and then you ignore it. And then they have court anyway without you. And you don't have a lawyer there. You don't have any of your witness there. You don't have you there. And the only people that are there are the people that are going to say all the reasons why you should lose. And then that's the only evidence that the judge has. So the judge doesn't have anything controverting it. So the judge has to give them what they're asking for. Mm -hmm. If they can basically prove up their case without anybody arguing against it. That's what you're doing if you avoid service. Have you ever had anyone evade services with you? Really? Yeah, I love when they do it. Please, (laughs) if you're opposing party and we're trying to serve you papers, please don't take them. Let me win easy. (laughs) <laughs> Save my client tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah. Please do that. You idiot. <laughs> so yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger is supposed to be at this Chris conference too. Yeah. So I'm excited to hear Arnold speak. I've never heard so, him speak. So we were talking about this briefly and mm-hmm. it came up and I was just thinking, so Arnold, a great motivational speaker. And I love hearing motivational speakers and things, but I've seen Arnold's motivational speeches. He's probably going to be very similar to what I've seen. Mm-hmm. I am probably more excited to see Lanny Basham, for example, Mm -hmm. because Lanny Arnold's very motivating and inspiring. Lanny also is too, but Lanny, the amount of natural talent, Lanny was made fun of in elementary school for when the teacher said, one of you in this class could be an Olympic gold medalist. And the little boy sitting either in front or next to Lanny says, I don't know who's going to get the gold, but I know who's definitely not Lanny. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that story. Even more importantly, the discovery and journey and knowledge that Lanny has added to the world, I think, exceeds most everyone Mm -hmm. because of the mental mindset things that he has implemented into sports and to training Olympians all over the world. And what he discovered between 1972 and 1976 that's explained in Freedom Flight then led to him writing the book with Winning in Mind and Parenting Champions and those things. Lanny teaches, as opposed to just pure motivation, Lanny teaches the actual mindset things that cause transformational change in someone as opposed to inspirational change. Because there's a lot of inspiration out there. Hey, when you encounter this, persevere. Well, that gets people to like the 85 percentile. 
But what gets you to the 99th and, and 100th? What gets you to the top 1% of 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 the top 1%? Like, it's easy to get to the top 1% of the top 1% of the top 1%. The difference between going to that next 1% and then going from that next 1%, that's where Lanny gets you. Arnold's motivation will get you up to the top 1% of, of three. Mm-hmm. You need Lanny Basham to get you to the next. Because yeah. without that, you won't get there. It just... You, the mental you, fortitude. It's the and... mental fortitude in order to have it on long term. And uh, for that, and especially, I don't know, let me see Arnold live and I'll tell you afterwards whether I would rather spend time with Lanny Basham or Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's probably Lanny, especially anywhere around shooting, <laughs> which is my thing. But even Todd calls him Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. I think Todd is Obi-Wan. Lanny is Yoda. Are and you Luke? I am Luke. There you go. You're going to carry Lanny point. around on your back. I'm going to carry Lanny around on my I might. <laughs> the Lawyer Data Podcast.